Nine months ago, I was in Argentina, in San Luis province actually, where four tigers were being kept in the train carriage. All that they have known before from human beings was a lot of neglects, a lot of punishments, a lot of uh, treating them as if they were not even worth taking, being taken care of. You could really feel their pain. Many people ask about the rescue mission, but the rescue, it's only the end part of a really long journey that started from the very first time that we got contacted about these four tigers in Argentina that really needed help and there was nobody in the country that could provide for this kind of support. When I saw Sandro, Gustavo, Mafalda and Messi last, I was pregnant and I was not able to be there till the last moment they got into their transport crates, but I knew I was leaving them in great, great hands to be able to take the next steps and take this long, long journey. I'm really excited on seeing them again. I dreamt about them being in such a place, about setting their paws in the grass for the first time and looking up into the sky. And I'm especially excited to see Sandro because we were especially worried for him due to his age, 18 years old tiger, with a lot of health challenges. And I've heard that he's doing really, really great. And I'm excited to see all the work that our team has put together with him to make it today into a much, much better condition and life for him. I'm ready. Oh, yes. Exciting now <laughs> to see them the first time now live here. Yes. Yes. yes, in the place where they actually belong. Yeah, yeah, I agree. If you look at, at, at this one, it's got spider in the grass. Oh my god! And then here is Gustavo on the left of her. Wow. Hi, Mafalda! Oh my god! I feel like different animals here, the guy. Yeah. Yeah, it's just she, uh, hey she's talking yes <laughs> she was doing the same hello. last time i saw her but she was so nervous and moving around and trying to figure out what was going on and i mean gustavo was extremely aggressive at that time seeing him lying down it's already a huge yeah. thing for me he wouldn't stop moving you know just yeah, pacing, coming and going pacing, and pacing, pacing and and completely out of control and now he's just <laughs> oh, they are both just just relaxing. It's it's amazing. It's it seemed impossible when we were there, and especially seeing the place. And I know that they have so many conditions, but all things considered, I think I think one of the things why big cats can kept can be kept so long in such bad conditions is they're so resilient. It's like really wonderful to see how they rehabilitate at the end and how they start blooming and getting into their own personality and also, you know, their whole behavior and, and, and the freedom that they have more or less here. The next phase is, as it was a very urgent rescue, we had to provide a, a temporary enclosure, which we luckily have, um, where we, I think they have still 100 times more space than they ever had, but it's not their fin final um, home, so to say. So we have started building now um, on the opposite side here, not far away, we have uh, started to build their permanent enclosures, which also have a house. It's not only the size of a big enclosure, which counts the rest of, 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 of the care and seeing them and understanding them, I think is much more important than just, yeah, here you have your enclosure and be happy, yes. Not many people would actually live in those surfaces in many of the developed parts of the world. So expecting four of them to live there was just criminal. And now having this perception of this immensity and just being able to look beyond and just not have to worry about what they're gonna eat, if they're gonna eat, if they're gonna be mistreated, if they're gonna be attacked or anything like that. 
is, is mindfulness, is just being in the right time and place. And I think that that's, that's the best, best that we can offer in our sanctuaries and places like Nyasha.